In our previous episode, titled Part 2, Decoding the Sources Maze, we have explained how to find the name of the place of origin for your ancestor, researching documents in your own country. But now, it's time to learn how to find ancestors' vital records in Poland. It's true. Most of the vital record registers from the 18th and 19th centuries can be found now in specific archives, the holders for those registers. But before we explain the process of how to locate those holders, we need to introduce you to the concept of registration location, and we will refer to them further as RL. So, to assist you in identifying RL, you need to also be familiar with the LLR formula. First, location. If you are lucky, you have identified the exact name of the place your ancestor was born. But you need to remember that the name of the place you have may refer to the region, county, or voivodeship, and not exactly to the place of birth itself. Second, language. Depending on the historical time frame and language spoken, they declared, may indicate the location of origin of your ancestor. And third, religion of your ancestor will play an important role in where to access the vital record. Let's now talk about the RL concept. As mentioned before, please remember that even if you know the name of the place of origin, doesn't mean you will be able to find the birth record just by looking for this name in an existing online database or archive collection. I wish. To be able to locate the name of RL, you will have to find out where the vital records from the place of origin were registered. So, to underline, a key to finding a vital record is to understand where the RL is located. Because no matter if the ancestor was born in a village or a city, their place of birth will belong administratively to a specific location called the registration location. And as such, it is known as the parish, civil registry office, or a Jewish religious community. Okay, so what does the LLR formula and registration location concept have in common? Let's explain that based on the following examples. We will try to locate the registration location for the birth record of Zofia Kowalczyk, born in 1890. To simplify the explanation in our example, we know that the place of our Zofia was born is the location, not, for example, a region, and it is called Suiki as it was indicated on the manifest. Additionally, we know from the census of 1910 that she declared she came from Russia. In the census of 1920, she declared to be born in Poland. This will be our first L. And that she spoke Polish. That will be the second L. And that she was Catholic. That's the R. There are many ways how you can start researching for Suiki. Some will go directly to gazetteers like the tabella of cities, villages, settlements of the Kingdom of Poland, 1827, the index of the Kingdom of Poland, 1877, geographical dictionary of the Kingdom of Poland, Kartenmeister, etc. But we usually like to use Google first. Why? First, Google search will show how many places in Poland may have the same name. Second, it will give us the idea if these places were a village or a city or any other type of settlement. If it was a village, then chances are that the registration location will be in another place than the one we're looking for. So Google gave us a reference to two locations in Poland named Suki. One is located in Warmińsko Mazurski, and another one in Łódzki. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, let's look closer at the other information we have. For example, the census of 1910. She said she was from Russia. 
Remember our tutorial, Polish History in a Nutshell? Between 1772 and 1918, Poland was partitioned by three empires, Russia, Prussia, and Austria. Now knowing she declared in the 1910 census being from Russia, it narrows down for us the area where Suki can be located. By comparing a current map with a map from the period around 1890, the only Suki located in the Russian partition is currently located in Vuch Voivodeship. Zofia also declared that she spoke Polish. And this information, together with the religion she observed, will help us to narrow down the registration location. But you need to bear in mind that doesn't mean her birth record will be written in Polish. Since she was born in 1890 in the Russian partition, her record will be written in Russian. Knowing the declared language spoken is also important when we are not sure what religion she observed. For example, she could have said she spoke Russian only, and that would indicate that she could attend the Russian Orthodox Church, which would mean we would have to look for a Russian Orthodox parish. In our case, we know from records that we've found in our country that Zofia was Catholic, which means we need to look for a Catholic parish that the village Suwiki belonged to in 1890. Now, knowing the partition and the faith she observed, we can look at the Index of the Kingdom of Poland, 1877. And according to this resource, we learn that the Catholic parish for the village of Suiki is located in Kutno. Okay, so now what? Let's check if this parish is indexed. First, let's check which Polish database has indexed records for the parish Kutno. If you look at the reference table on the FBPGG website for Wudski Wojewodship, it indicates that the chances are the indexed records for Kutno are included in the Geneteca database. And yes, Americans, I said Geneteca, not Genetica. When using Geneteca, first of all, choose the British flag to have an English interface. Then choose Wudski in the field province. Choose Kutno in the field parish. And type first name and surname in the field's person and year of birth in the range of years. Click search. And voila, we have Sophia's birth record. Sometimes in the remarks, you will see the word scan. If you click on it, you will have direct access to the record itself. Let me give you another example. This time, we're looking for the marriage record of Andreas and Anna. We know they married around 1800. This information comes from calculation of the last known child. But we only know from their death certificate that they were born and most likely married in the Grand Duchy of Posen. We also know they spoke German and they were Protestants. Of course, the first thing we should do is Google Grand Duchy of Posen to understand that this is a name of an area. Since this is rather a reference to the area, not location, the use of gazetteers may not be that helpful here in locating possible RL. So how can we find Andreas and Anna's marriage? How can we try to find a Protestant parish in the area of the Grand Duchy of Posen? Since we googled the name, we know that when created, the Grand Duchy of Posen became part of Prussia, which would mean that we need to look in the Prussian partition of Poland. We also know that the current area of the Grand Duchy of Posen corresponds roughly to the current Greater Poland Voivodeship area. Okay, so now what? Well, let's check to see if we can find a database with indexed marriages for that area. 
we will look again at the reference table on the FBPGG website for Greater Poland Voivodeship. It indicates that chances are the indexed marriage records are included in Poznan Project database. Once we open this database, we will input the groom and bride's name and narrow the time frame and press search. And we are once again lucky because the search result shows a marriage of Andreas Gebar and Anna Rosine Weiss, married on 16 April 1804 in the evangelical parish of Krosno, Alkerk. And so, off to find the records. But for that, check the tutorials on our FBPGG website. So, to summarize, is it enough to know the location? Of course not. Since this is a common misunderstanding among those who look for ancestors in Poland, it's not just about the location. It is about the registration location, and as such can only be found if you gather all known information during your research, according to the LLR formula. To help you further, we have developed a detailed tutorial how to find the parish registration location for all three partitions, so please check our website. You can also browse our website for other tutorials, tools, and resources. Hope you enjoyed our little tutorial and my very bad Polish pronunciation. If you need our assistance, please join us and other volunteers at the Facebook group called Polish Genealogy. And no, we still don't have Twitter. <laughs>